Hello everyone, this is iMuscles and Innervation with pulse of each cranial nerve in a 3D version. If you have a look at this eyeball, you will find extraocular muscles. And in this table, nicely illustrated that all muscles called recti and oblique. Recti means straight and oblique means oblique. So there are four recti, superior rectus, this one, okay. This is a superior rectus. This is inferior rectus, medial rectus, and from lateral, this is a lateral rectus. These recti function is by name, superior doing elevation of the eyeball, inferior doing depression of the eyeball, and they are attached in front of the middle line of the eye, like you see here, and it's highly illustrated here. So there are recti, all supplied by oculomotor, apart from lateral rectus. This lateral rectus here supplied by abducens nerve. Abducens because it's doing abduction. Oblique muscles, inferior oblique, and superior oblique. What's important for me, because this inferior oblique supplied by oculomotor motor as well, what's important for me today is to know what is superior oblique muscle. It is here, attached in a strange way to a trochlea. That's why it's supplied by trochlear nerve, by its name of this trochlea or poly. And it comes here and bend around this trochlea and attach it behind the middle line of the eyeball or the equator to do reverse of its name. It's called superior oblique, but it's doing depression and intorsion of the eyeball because it's attached behind. I will separate that muscle now to illustrate it very clear. Okay, so it's separated here and you see it's called superior oblique attached to trochlea, which is hidden here, and it becomes spread behind the medial equator. So if you pull this muscle over the trochlea and backwards, you find the eye will be doing depression and intorsion. Okay, this is the superior oblique. Okay, so we will come here again to Netter's illustration. And you can find here, this is called levator palpebrae superioris, is this muscle here from above, the eyelid elevator, the highest one, and then the superior rectus. And from here around this poly, this is called the superior oblique. And other recti with inferior oblique. All muscles, levator palpebrae superioris, superior rectus, medial rectus, all muscles by oculomotor. Apart from superior oblique, trochlear, and the uh, other one, lateral rectus, abduction, so it's applied by abducens. Trochlear is the fourth cranial nerve, and abducens is the sixth cranial nerve. We have another photo illustration about what's called intorsion and what's called extorsion, and the superior oblique will do in torsion or clockwise uh, movement of the eyeball and the recti doing this is the medial rectus towards this is here the nose for example so this medial rectus will do adduction and lateral rectus abduction okay okay and here as well from here as a 3d version you can see as well this is the superior oblique so you will never forget this pictures and 3D illustration at all because it's highly illustrated as you see. Okay, so if we come to the oculomotor nerve palsy because it's giving levator palpebrae superioris and gives uh, the sphincter pupillae bar parasympathetic supply for this iris to do uh, contraction and meiosis, and is giving all muscles apart from LR6SO4. What are LR6SO4? These muscles 
uh, are lateral rectus by abducens doing abduction and SO4 superior oblique by the fourth cranial nerve. So these muscles supplied by other nerves than the trochlear nerve. This is a mnemonic, how I keep it. And then you can find that when an oculomotor innervation happens because of many things. First of all, because of posterior communicating artery aneurysm happening here, and you see here it's compressing the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve, and also ankle or ankle herniation, the ankles will herniate, and uh, this is in raised ICP and compresses the oculomotor nerve because it's very close to the ankles of the uh, brain. So the final result will be blown eye. Blown eye means the eye will be down and out due to unopposed action of superior oblique and lateral rectus muscles supplied by uh, superior oblique by trochlear and abducens nerve supplying lateral rectus. Midriasis or dilatation of this black here, this is the uh, pupil, will be dilated midriasis, not meiosis. Why? Because the parasympathetic contained in the oculomotor coming from the ciliary ganglion will give the sphincter pupillae muscle. So midriasis and ptosis because this muscle levator balbibri superioris. Balbibri means eyelid, okay? This is the oculomotor nerve palsy. Remember again, oculomotor, eye will be blown, midriatic, totic, out and down. Okay, now for the trochlear, for the cranial nerve palsy and and the abducens nerve, sex nerve palsy. Here you can see again another picture from Netters. You can see this is a levator papery superioris. Don't forget the trochlea, the bully of the superior oblique. That's why it's called trochlear nerve. And it's attached here. If you see here, this is the muscle here. Okay, it's attached behind the equator. If you see, it's highly demonstrated here so that you can see uh, here again, it will do like this. So it will pull eye down with intortion. Okay, what's important for me for this trochlear nerve supplying this muscle is that it's supplying severe oblique. So the eye will be extorted like this, uh, causing clockwise because intortion is anti-clockwise, sorry. So extortion and diplopia. Why? Because the person you are looking at, looking by this intorted right eye correctly, and he is moving his head to the contralateral side to compensate for this extortion. So you will find this shape, okay? You will find a rotational ma uh, malalignment of both eyes. This is deep lobia. And also we'll find this, uh, to compensate this, the head will be tilted towards the unaffected normal side. This is the trochlear nerve palsy. For abducens nerve palsy, Remember only LR6, longest intracranial course, raised ISP, horizontal diplopia. The lateral rectus, simply this one here. This is the lateral rectus. Is uh, supplying the eye or attached to the eye in front of the equator, so it will lead to what's called uh, abduction. That's why it's supplied by abducens. So when its abducens is injured, the eye will be adducted due to unopposed action of the medial rectus, the adductor muscle. Because of the longest intracranial nerve, 
course of this abducens nerve, any reason for raised intracranial pressure, like mass occupying lesions, this will lead to compression over the abducens nerve and causing horizontal diplopia like you see this picture. Lastly, I will go back to the trochlear nerve to let you know another feature of this trochlear nerve palsy that when you are locking down by adducted eye, okay, this action could, could not be done. Why? Again, if you see here, the function of the trochlear to do depression, trochlear uh, nerve supplying the superior oblique to do depression and in torsion. So you will not be able to lock down while you, your eye is adducted because of the paralysis of the superior oblique. So you can find a scenario in your exam saying this example or tell you that the patient could not look inferiorly when his eye is adducted. This is another scenario in MRCS. To know the reasons for trochlear nerve palsy, we said that it is mainly in head trauma patients. And the presentation, we said that head tilting away from the affected eye to correct uh, this extortion on the contralateral affected side and chin tucking and slightly looking upward. This is for correcting the hypertropia. And the patient will not be able looking down while his eye adducted. Okay, thank you so much.